A flagship is usually a company's best product. It's top of the line, packed with a lot of new and innovative features, but is decidedly out of reach in terms of affordability. That was how things were until everything changed in the last year or so. Now we have flagship grade devices at surprisingly low price points without many compromises. The Meizu MX-5 is one of them. Announced a month back in China, the MX-5 has all the features and aesthetics you'd look for in a flagship and is quite affordable. But should you buy it? The short answer is yes and the long answer for this is called a review. Let's go ahead. The design of the MX-5 might look like a combination of the Galaxy S6 and the iPhone 6 Plus but is actually typically Meizu when you look at its predecessors. The glass on the front sits on a full metal frame with chamfered edges which are shiny enough to be visible on the front face of the phone. The metal is curved from the sides to the back to fit your hands and has a smooth matte finish. The finish was highlighted by Meizu at their event for its meticulous 68 step 30 day process which yields a 21 gram metal body. The point is the effort that has gone into making the metal body shows. The finish is beautiful and screams high quality. However, metal bodies are known to interfere with signals, so there are two strips of high quality plastic on the top and bottom of the phone. These strips were initially indistinguishable from the metal in terms of looks, but after a month of use they got shinier due to the many greasy human hands that handled it. And there is also a small metal strip that divides the metal and the plastics, and this is where the bump can be felt. A smooth metallic body, especially with a design that favors curves on the sides of the phone, is also prone to slips and falls. That's the case with the MX-5 too. At 7.6mm, the phone is quite slim and by design there is not much metal to grip on the sides. The weight at 149 grams is not light enough to stop a slip. As a result, you would need a case or be okay with seeing scratches on the chamfered edges and maybe a dent or two on the plastic parts of the phone. But even after a couple of hard unfortunate falls, there wasn't a single scratch on the highly polished metal, which is great. The display and its small bezels dominate the front of the phone, leaving space for the notification LED, the front facing camera and sensors at the top, and home button at the bottom. The display is a 5.5 inch Full HD AMOLED screen, which not only lets Meizu achieve its thickness, but it's also simply great. With infinite contrast, the AMOLED screen dazzles in nearly every lighting condition and has no problems with viewing angle or outdoor use. These laminated displays have become a mainstay in Meizu's phones, but the MX-5 is properly tweaked, not too saturated AMOLED screen takes it to the next level, despite having a pentile subpixel arrangement. Similarly, the camera too is pretty good on the Meizu MX-5. It's a Sony IMX220 20.7 megapixel sensor with a f2.2 6 element lens. It's almost the same camera as the one on the MX4 Pro, but Meizu claims that it is more refined with better algorithms. As a result, you get pleasing photos in daylight, but the 1.2 micrometer pixel and f2.2 aperture don't help much in low light as photos tend to be shaky most of the time. Here are some camera samples. As you can see, the photos generally look great with accurate white balance and colors. The sharpening is a little overdone and you have no control over it because the camera interface is very minimal with quick access only to modes, toggles and of course filters. But we noted in all cases, even in low light, focusing is accurate and fast thanks to the laser autofocus unit just below the circular camera lens. It sits alongside a two-tone flash which generates a neutral color or hot or cool flashes according to the scene. In the video department, the MX-5 is capable of recording up to 4K video with finer compression thanks to the new HEVC H265 codec and also records 100fps 720p slow motion videos apart from the other standard resolutions and frame rates. The 4K mode with HEVC and slow motion video are enabled by the MediaTek Helio X10 powering the MX-5. Helio X10 powers the device with 8 A53 cores running at 2.2GHz and a PowerVR G6200 GPU that handles all the graphic duties. With 3GB of RAM, there are no problems with multitasking and the Full HD resolution definitely doesn't strain the GPU for normal work. From all the benchmark tests we ran, the pattern is quite apparent. The Helio X10 is as powerful as a Snapdragon 805 except in some GPU tests if you need a point of reference. Gaming was as expected and overheating is not much of an issue to worry about here. Sure, the phone heats up, but it doesn't turn into an oven despite the metallic build. The Helio X10 is also responsible for the 4G dual nano SIM slots in the phone. The chip has support for both the FTD LTE Band 3 
and LTE band 40, so it is ready for India's 4G pockets. Internally, the storage is a concern by default because the MX-5 doesn't come with an expansion slot, so the inbuilt mass storage is all you have. Around 14.56 GB is available for the system and about 11 GB is available for the user. Despite this low price, the MX-5 has more flagship features on board like for example the fingerprint sensor. The MX-4 Pro was the first Meizu device to sport the M-Touch feature but it seems to have been improved and rechristened M-Touch 2.0 for the MX-5. It's a physical button that incorporates capacitive touch and biometric fingerprint recognition underneath the glass. M-Touch 2.0 exceeds expectations when it comes to performance. It's wildly fast and works well even with a smudged written glass, but of course you would need to give it a second chance sometimes. The accuracy levels were high and we were able to get multiple fingers registered for the fastest unlock times on this phone except those rare few times. The capacitive M-Touch button also acts as a back button on a single soft tap while the hard tap of the physical button takes you to the home screen. This dual functionality is one of the many neat UX tweaks as a part of the FlyMe OS, a completely custom UI running on top of Android 5.0 Lollipop. FlyMe has gained a lot of features and design tweaks since the days of the MX2 and it's good to see that consistency is now more prevalent across the UI than before. It's launched as screens populated with apps and a lot of these default apps are delightfully minimalistic. By default, the icons have a fresh look and most of them are custom according to the app. Think of it as a pre-installed icon pack. And yes, there are tons of customization options and thankfully some of the necessary Google apps come preloaded unlike Meizu devices sold in China. The performance of the UI is fast and fluid, mostly maintaining a high frame rate throughout but some of the default apps did misbehave now and then, most notably the default browser. But this is Android, so there is just way too much choice to complain about things like these. With 3150mAh of capacity, the MX-5 lasts for a day but with very little charge left at the end. This has been mostly the case over the course of usually medium to heavy usage. The screen on time hovers around 3 to 3.5 hours for one full charge of the device with additional payloads like continuous use of mobile internet, tethering and Twitter. So about 18 hours of standby time is what I consistently get with the same pattern of usage. Our one charge core for the MX-5 is a respectable 9 hours and 46 minutes of battery lives. So that's the whole theme here. The Meizu MX-5 is truly a flagship device despite the lowly price. It's got great design, looks beautiful, takes decent pictures with fast AF, lets you use advanced tech like fingerprint authentication and basically gives you an accessible flagship experience without too many compromises. Of course, you will have to cover the phone up to safeguard the metal and glass and deal with limited storage options if you are on a budget. But at this price range, the Meizu MX-5 is highly recommended and should be on your list of choices. So that's about it for the Meizu MX-5 review. Do hit the like button if you like this and subscribe to our channel for more videos like these. And also do let us know what you think in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.